how to use Power BI to build dashboards. Sorry, how to use PowerPoint to build dashboard on Power BI. Our facilitator for today is Abisola Agbola. This webinar is brought to us by is by two partnership, your business and um, the enterprise DNA. So enterprise DNA is a learning platform for data analytics. It hosts a lot of events like um, Power BI challenges, some showcases. They also have a number of resources that you could learn from. Another of our partners is MHS Analytics. MHS Analytics is a high quality provider of data analytics services to companies and also a high and also high value professionals. They specialize in delivering financial modeling services, BI solutions, and Excel report automation. They are committed to giving their clients the business intelligence edge they need using tools that they already have. So your business edge is a registered Microsoft Excel consulting financial modeling, business intelligence, data analysis, and enterprise solution firm in Nigeria that specializes in helping companies and high value professionals be on top of their business data. So their team our team consists, our team are developers of the only Nigeria financial markets analysis tool on Microsoft Office. We're also the developers of the Nigeria Stock X Stocks Analysis Dashboard, and we are the brains behind the Nigerian Market Data Platform. Today, we would be hosting, we would be hosting a guest, our guest who is Abisola Agola. She's a Microsoft Trends Learn Ambassador and an experienced data analyst with great technical expertise in data management and as well as data visualization. She's also the co-founder of Gene of Love Africa, a youth-led social expert enterprise which focuses on supporting orphanages across Nigeria, achieve maximum impact through fundraising campaigns and workshops. She's also a Power BI developer. So Abola, I mean Abisala, I would Set the clock you can set the ball running from here. Okay, hi, hi everyone. Thank you so much to the request for the introduction. Kindly confirm you can hear me clearly. Yes, you can. Can you all hear me? Okay. Thank you so much for the introduction, and I'm very honored to be here. So welcome everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on wherever you are joining in from. My name is Abisola Gola, and I'm a data analyst and visualization expert with um, extensive knowledge on Excel, SQL, PowerPoint, and Power BI. So during this webinar, I'm going to be doing like a walkthrough on how to build interactive and visually appealing dashboard using Power BI and PowerPoint. So I want us to follow through, and I'm also very sure that we have um, beginners intermediate in this session. And I'm very sure it's going to be, we're all going to be learning something from this session. So let me just dive right into this session without wasting much of our time. So I'm going to share my screen now. So I'm very sure most of us here, we are all familiar with Power BI and PowerPoint. You must have heard about what we use Power BI to do, the usefulness of Power BI and PowerPoint. So we know that Power BI is used majorly for, is used for data analysis. And I'm going to be doing an illustration on that. So I would like to share my screen now.
Please let me know when you can see my screen. So today we are going to be doing a demonstration okay. on how to build okay. this dashboard. Kindly confirm you can see my screen. Yes, we can see it. Okay, so I'm going to be doing like a walkthrough on how to build this dashboard and how we can make use of it also with PowerPoint, how to integrate it on PowerPoint as well. So this data set here was downloaded from Kagu, Kagu.com. So I don't know if you don't mind, I share the link to the data set, though I'm also going to share the, the data set with you as well. I don't know, should I share the data set with you guys as well or after the whole session, I should share the data set with you. If I share it. Okay. So I'm going to share the data set probably after the session. So this is our PowerPoint Power BI desktop. And we here yeah, we have the report view, we have the data view, we have the model view. So the report view is where our dashboard is being done, where we do our visualization and most of the visuals that we see on our Power BI. Why the data view? This is where we have our data sets. Sorry, so this is where. We get our data set in case we want to edit or do some other things with our data sets. So here is our home. Home here, this is where we get our data. In case we have our data, our data sources can be gotten from anywhere, either from Excel, data flow, data vas, data vas is another aspect on power platform. We have text, CSD, web, and so on and so forth. So, but today our data set is from Excel file. So we're going to Bring in our data set. Please let me know when you have a question. So here's my data set. So I'll bring it in. Please let me know when you are not clear with anything or you need me to go back to something. So this is our data set with loaded the data set so we are not going to load the data set because we have a lot of things to do with the data set yeah we have the experience level when i share the link to the source of the data which is on cargo we are going to see all of this where they stated the meaning of m i s e e n and so on and so forth so in order to make us clear with what we are working with so we need to transform this data set. So we are going to transform our data set in order to clean our data properly. So we're going to transport, transform it to the Power Query before we load it to the Power BI desktop. So here we have our data on our Power Query. So now that we have this here, on our cargo, it is stated there that M high means mid-level row. These are the experience level. This is the employment type. We have the salary, which the hen, which is in Europe USD, and also it has been converted to USD here as well. We have employee residence. We have remote ratio. The remote ratio here, they said, and um, it is stated there that zero means people that work on site. People 50 means people that work hybrid probably maybe three times at work and maybe um two times at home why 100 means they work fully at home here is the location we have the location and we have the size of the company which is lsm which is large size medium so we need to rename these data sets that we were given so how to rename this is that we highlight it here and is that we highlight it here and go to our transform menu and come to replace values 
then rename our values. Rename this MI to what we've been given. We have MI. But first, let me show us what we have here. So in order to have an idea on what we are going to be reading, we have EN. EN means entry rule. We have EX, which is, which is the executive rule. And we have MI, which is the middle level rule. And SE, which is the senior level rule. So after highlighting it here, we come to replace values. And the first thing we are going to be renaming is M high, it's in capital letter, M high. And we said M high is the mid level. We're going to rename it. Then we can also, if we don't want to rename it with transform menu, we can also highlight it as well. Right click and come here to click on replace values in case we don't want to go to the transform menu. Anyone works, anyone that is better. And also, we have EN, which is the entry level. Rename it entry level. And also, the next one is the SE, which is the senior level. Room. Remember I said which one, anyone works, you can come to the transform bar to rename it, or you right click and automatically click on the replace values to replace your value. And we have EX, oh, sorry, X, S, -E, which is the senior. Level. Then we also have um, our executive rule, which is the last one, which is EX. Executive rule. Or executive level. So we are done with that. So we are moving on to the employment side. We need to know the type of employment. If it is a full time role, if it is freelancing, if it is contract, if it is um, part time, like we have it here. We have CT. CT means contract. FL means freelance. FT means full time. Then PT means part time. So, the same way we rename, we replace our values here. We are going to do the same thing here and replace the value. So we start with FT, which is the full time. Click on OK. Then we still have three more. Next one is PT, which is the part time. And we have CT, which is Contract. Click on OK. And I think we have one more. Let me confirm. OK, which is an FL, which is freelancing. FL, freelance. OK, so we have everything now all set. So let's move on to the next one. Which is. We don't need to. Change this or. We can also work on it, but because of our time, we just move straight to the next one, which is the company size. We need to also rename that we. Having this L head, um, it does not really make sense when we are trying to visualize our work. It will make it neat as well. So replace value. L means large. Then S 
means small and m m means medium and small. Okay. Then you ask, okay, so for the re remote ratio here, in the data set, it was stated there that zero means on site. So we need to change this on site. We need to change this to rename this as well. We can't work with numbers for our visualization when we are trying to visualize and understand the type of job that they do if it is a full if it is on site if it is hybrid if it is remote so we also need to change this so so why doing this 100 means remote so we can see here that this is not going to work and the only reason why this is not working is because this is in a number string and what we are trying to achieve is in a text format. So we need to change this to a text format in order to make our visual, in order to make our work, to replace our values rather. So we need to change it to text format. Please let me know when, if you are following. If you have any questions, you can just drop in the comment section. Okay. So we need I, I stated earlier that we need to change this to a text format in order to make in order for us to replace the values. So that's what we've just, we've just done now. So now if we should try and work on this, 100 means remote. That means they work remotely. Then 50 now is working. I didn't really change it to text format. We might not like we, we might not get a result for it. Like it won't work because what we are trying to achieve is in a text format and not in a numbers format. So we also try to change 50 to 50 means hybrid. Y zero means on site. That means they work on site. <clears throat> so now I think our data is ready. Yes, let's just go through it. Yes, we've done all the things that we need to do. It's ready and all. So we can just we can just load it. Close and apply and just load it to our Power BI desktop. Okay, so we have this now. So let's not forget that this is what we are trying to achieve. And once we are done achieving this, we are going to integrate it into our PowerPoint slides, like integrate it. So when we want to present, instead of screenshotting and all, we can just go straight to our PowerPoint to get this data set. So the first thing we need to do is, I already explained this, that this is the report view where we analyze our data, where we work on our dashboard. This is the, data view in case we need to work on our data. We need to 
edit it or create some DAX formula, want to write our DAX formula or anything that has to do with our data, then this is the model view. Model has to do with the relationship. Maybe when you're trying to create a relationship between a particular data set and the other one. So this is our dashboard. So we can do two things. Is it that we design our, our report view on PowerPoint or we come here to work on it on our own? So for this session, we're going to be making use of our Power BI to design our dashboard. So yeah, we have the page information, we have page information, we have the canvas setting. This is like a six by nine. This is like the normal size is the consume costume size for dashboard. Then if you need like maybe like a mobile size, a mobile size is like 10, 1080 by 920. But for today, we are going to be making use of the normal size, which is the 16 by 19 size. So we have this. Then for the canvas background as well. So today we are going to make use of blue colors. There is a website where I get inspiration for colors. I'm also going to drop that after the session today. So we can also go there and also explore on how to get colors, a good colors. But for today, we are going to be making use of blue colors, blue color rather. So for this image, this image is if you want to attach a file, maybe a background to your analysis for it, to your visualization, you need to attach a background to it or something. Then for this one, we have the normal fit and fit. Maybe when you attach the image, is that it covers the whole page or you make it half or make it fit for the dashboard. But for today, we don't really we don't really have to do that. We can just do that maybe half on our own, maybe where we are trying to practice this at all. So we're going to make use of blue color. And one thing about color selecting is I try to make use of a particular color. Like for instance, I'm going with blue. I just make sure that most of the colors I use is within blue. If I'm going to be making use of a darker shade of blue, I'm going to make use of the next one and go to the next one and make sure that I just don't move about. Like I just don't leave wherever, the, whatever color that I'm selecting. So since I'm going with this, I feel this color, this background will be okay. So after clicking on this, we can discover that it's not showing on our report view. So we have to come to transparency and try to reduce it in order for us to see it on our dashboard. So now we have this. We have this as our background. So this, I feel this is a nice color that we're going to make use of. So after that, we move straight to our title, like title of our of our reports. So the title of our report is data science, jobs, salaries. That's what we're working on. So we try to bring like a text box here. Under your own menu, you see like a text box. So you bring it in. Come here. Then come here. Then we try and maybe the font size. We can try and use may make use of maybe 40, 36. Anyone, anyone works for anyone. But I'll just go with let me just go with 40. And then try and write our title which is data science job salaries. And we try and make our text bold. I think that's fine. Try and reduce it. So after doing that, we come to the editing, come to the visualization fan, try and edit some of the things that we would like to edit. So for here, we have properties, we have title, we have properties, we have title, we have effects, 
effects, this is where we get our background. And me, I would strongly advise that the background that you're going to be using from scratch, I, I, you should use it for most of your visualization because colors can be contradicting at times. So in order to avoid, avoid some mix up, just try and start with the color that you use from the onset for your background in order not to mix up. So maybe when you're done with your data, you're done with your visualization, you can try and explore, maybe try and copy the old page and to a new page, then try and explore colors. But for the start, you can just make use of the background colors that you use for your data, for your dashboard rather. So here we initially we use blue, so we can just make use of our background color, which is blue. And for this text string too, we can also change it. To, we can make use of white color. For this, so for the text, we can we can only change the color for text here, which is white color. So we see that it all makes sense. So that's not all. I also like to add shadow and maybe rounded corners to my visuals in order to make it look presentable and fine. So yeah, this is where we have the rounded corners. And for the rounded corners, this is the, just the shape. So we have to increase the rounded corners in order for the rounded corners to show. Most times I use 15 or more, depend on what you want. But I think 15 is fine. Yeah. Then maybe if you want more, you can increase it more. So this is what we have. You see, but this is black color. Black color does not really make sense on this. Let's just try and look for a color that would make it pop out. So we can make use of maybe this blue. Sorry. I'm working on visual borders. So for the borders, you can make use of this blue. And since we already made the, so can we see what we have here? This one is still better. It's still in line. It's still the same shades of blue that we have here. Like it's still the same shades and similar. So we, that's not how we can also add shadows to it. Can come here. This is where we have our shadows. Shadows, you can put it on. So the same color that we use for our visual border, we can also use it for our shadow in order to make it look more presentable and nice. So we have this. So I think it's making sense. Or is it not? Do we all go with this color? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yes. Okay, so that's nice. So we can write on. So the next thing that we need to do is to know the sum, the total amount of, like the total sum of salaries are, are earned by the data scientists. So here, yeah, most times, to know the, to calculate the total amounts, we always make use of our cards. This is our visualization part. This is our filter menu. This is our data view. So make use of our of our cards to know the total amount. So we have this. So we can just calculate for the, remember initially, this first salary, sorry, hold on. Okay, so we have this part, which is the total. And we said this, that the salary here, this first salary, it's salary for both that are earning in USD, um, Europe, and so on and so forth. So we just want to know the total amount of salaries. So we can just add it to it. And so we have this. And we can try and work on the colors. Yeah, so we come to the formats visuals. Yeah, 
in order to work on our color. Come to general, first of all, work on our background color. Background color matters a lot. Work on the background colors. Then go with these same background colors that we've been using. Then also try and introduce these visual borders. You know, we use this for the first one that we did, for the title that we did. The same thing that we did here, we can also use it here too. And that's to make a what whatever you've started, you make sure you try and use it for all others. And maybe if you want to try and explore at the end of the OHA analysis, you can try and copy and paste it on a new page so you can just try and explore more colors. Maybe you want to try and explore more colors. So on it, on the visual border and select the color. This was the color that we picked for the border and also the rounded corners as well most times i make use of 15. you can if you in case you, you feel that okay this is not curved enough you can just try and increase it more to the one that you Select this. Okay. I just want to be sure that everyone is here. So we have the shadow, select it as well. And don't forget, we still have to work on our text. The sum of salary. We still have to work on our text. So we have to come back to let's come back to these visuals and try to work on this you know this the text the color that we use for our text here is white so obviously we're going to use white for this as well so we're going to use a white color so we have this we can make it bold as well then if you want to increase it you can increase it anyone you can play with this you can walk around with this and so we have this and also think that's that about that so we can just try and duplicate this because we are going to be working with some all others some all other card like some to know the total amount of salary in usd and also to know the average as well average salaries of most of all of these data science scientists work out so we can just try and duplicate this in order to make it easier. So we can just duplicate this. So we can also use it for another visual. So you can come here and click on, remember this is in USD. This sum here is in USD. Sum that we have here is in USD. So the first one that we did is for both USD, Euro and, and all others. But this is the total salary in USD. So we can just come here. Then cancel it here. And click on sum of salary in USD. So what we have here is 68 million. And so we also try and Copy and duplicate another one as well. Then we can try and change it to average because most of the things that we're going to be working on here is average. We want to know the average salary that most of them are earning based on their size, based on their role, and so on and so forth. And based on their type, if it is in mid level, entry level, and so on. So this is like average. So for the average, we have this. We have this for the average. So I would like to say this. So for people that maybe you don't really know how to arrange your data sets, like to make it to be on it, on a to make it be on a, on, on the same line, you can just come to the view and click on grid grid lines. So
that's a TV. TV. So I don't know why. Oh. Yeah, I'll come back to that since. So the grid line is just going to show. I'm going to come back to that. It's just going to show us the line. So for the average salary in USD, we have um 112.30k. So that's that about that. So the next thing that we need to do that we need to visualize on is um the average salary based on the company size. We want to know the one that earned the most. Maybe it's people that employ, like that have large sum of people that work with them, or maybe they have medium size or, or small size. So for this, we can make use of our donut chart. Donut chart is used for comparison for two or three data, like just to know the comparison of two or, or three data sets. So let's make use of our donut chart. For our donut charts, we have salary in US USD. So we are going to be making use of the salary in USD most of the time because they already converted the salary for us in USD. Instead of having issues with maybe the amounts they are being paid either in USD or Europe or pounds. So, so it's already it has already been converted for us in to USD. So we have this, and since we are making this of size, we're going to bring in our size, company size as well. So we have this. So we are going to come here to also work on our colors in order for you to match with every other color that we have here. So come here, general effects. Then for the background, we are still going to make use of this background that we've been using in order to follow up with what we've started. General effect. So for the background, we're going with this. Then also the same thing that we did here. You can you can also it's not a must to start with effects and you can start from anywhere but just to make it straightforward just make it clear and not to be con confused about the old color and all so I I always I always advise that you start with your background color so we have background color and visual border and visual border is also not compulsory but it's my I feel it makes the work attractive and it makes it more insightful so as i just try to use um these and add rounded corners the rounded corners as well it depends on what you want you can increase it to more than 15 for me most of the times i use 15 and also the shadow you can try and work with the shadow as well the same color so now let's move into the main color inside the donut chart. For the title, you can also change the title as well. You can leave it sum of salary. Sorry, we're supposed to work with average salary. But anyone, share, anyone works, you can go with average, you can go with sum. So for the slices, we are going to make use of blue color, I told you earlier. And and like I said earlier, that once you start with the color, it's always very easier to make, like when you start from this, you can move to this, 
for the next one. Sorry, where is that with this for the first one? Then the next one can be the previous one. You can also take it from up as well. Then the next one is going to be the highest. It's going to make the data more. Can you see now that it's it's coming out nice, looking so amazing. So you can also do it this way. You can also start from up, from this, next one, this, next one, this, then it all makes sense. So that's that about that. Then for the text, For the tights with company size, you can just off the company size. I don't think with company size is necessary. You can as well add it. Then for the text, you make it bold and also make it white as well. We've been using white color for our text format. So the details label, details label have to do it. It depends on whatever you want. If it's only category, the details label is this. Depend on the category. For me, I'll just leave it as maybe category and percent, percent um percentage of the category. So and the values. The values on that. Under it is white color, change it to white color, and also make it bold. You can as well increase it if you want. <clears throat> you can increase the format as well if you want. I think that's okay. We have to come to the title. The title, you can change it to whatever you want. white and make it bold and so we have this i think we are good to go i think this is perfect. it looks amazing so for this i think we need to change this to average because we are working with average, we need to know the average sum. So for the average sum, we can see here that people with large company size have, they are being pay, paid more, like people with large company size are being paid more, followed by the medium size, and the list is the small size. So the next one, we can also try and duplicate this. You get this here, and change the visuals. The next one we're going to be working with is the average salary based on the experience. So we can just remove this from here because we're not working with sizes. We want to try and know the average size that are being paid based on their experience level. So we have the experience level here. So we also try and come here to change the colors for the for the slices. So like I said earlier, it's always easier to make use of colors that are from for, for colors that you started with and follow the trend of how it's how it is on the color things. So so we can just start with this the same way we did here. Then next one here, and don't forget that we said donut chart is used to know the comparison, like to know the comparison between some set of groups of data sets. So we pick this first, we pick this next, and also this one. Then since we don't have any other further colors to pick, we can just go with the text color that we've been using, which is white color. I feel white color also goes with it as well. Can you see? It looks amazing. So we have that as well. So from this, we can see here that we can see here that the executive group are being paid more. Those on the executive group, they are being paid more. Why? Senior level. 
Apex and mid level role and entry level role. So that's that about that. So maybe after our whole visualization, we try and look for a way to make sure that all the visuals align together. So the next thing for us to know is to know the average salary of USD in average salary of in USD by the remote, like if they, the people that work remotely, like how much they are being paid, if it's people that work remotely that are being paid more, or people that work on site or hybrid. So we can just make use of, <clears throat> can make use of, <clears throat> can just try and make use of this. Can make use of this chart. We have a lot of charts that we can make use of. You can play around the chart. You can make use of start color, column charts. You can use cluster. You can use everything. You can use anything that you want to use as long as your data is giving meaning and it's coming out well as it should be and people can read meaning to your data sets. So after this, So we have this, we are making use of what was this? We are making use of this stacked column chart. So and the visuals that we're trying to bring in a salary here, which is average. And then the remote ratio, which is this. So we have this. You can try and increase it if you want. Then we we'll come back to editing our colors, come to format. Work on background first. We we'll work on the background first. The background color we'll be using is blue. Then after that, we we'll try and come to our visual border, increase it, and change it to this blue that I've been working on. Think this, and also add our rounded corners to it. Fifteen. Then shadow, had a shadow to it, which is also the same color. Let me just be sure it's the same color. Ah, uh, the same color. Yeah. And also, there's no hole. We can as well. We can also change the title of this, of this um visual like. For each visual that we use, we can change the title to wherever we want to, you know, that just for us to understand it. So, so we have this. We come to the X axis, try and work on the colors and everything. Make the text bold, make it white. We try and increase it so it won't, yeah. So we try and increase it. Then. That's that about that. We also come to Y has this. Come to values. Make it bold. Make it white as well. So. Then for the title, we can we can decide to leave it. We can decide to add the title. I guess removing it will be fine. Since on the white houses we don't have <clears throat> don't have anything. So for the grid lines, we can just remove the grid lines. I don't think it's necessary. So we just remove the grid lines as well. So for the tie to For the data label, we can just try and work on it. Since we've been working on a 
particular color we can try and work on the data label for this as well sorry columns rather so it's not showing here so we can just switch it on here on show hall so we we can see how the data that have been projected so we try and work on the same set of colors that we've been working on this first the next one is this then we have this as a so i think it's make it's, it's making sense now so i think what is left is just for the title the title of the title of the So make it gold and you, we change the color to white. You can if you if you like to play on the background as well, you can also work on the background, but I don't think it's necessary because the background on using a particular background for everything. So we have this. So I think we are good to go. So yeah, we can see here that. The, the people that work remotely are being paid more than followed by on site and people that work hybrid that work hybrid so another thing we would like to visualize is let me see average salary by let me just select company size and maybe work here let's know the company size and let's try and work on company size and the year so the best visualization to use for that is like it should be for clustered columns because cluster clustered columns work more with category Cow data sets like groups, it also works with groups and anything that's with category and to come and, and comparison as well. So we have this, so just select a uh, salary in USD and then we're going to select company size and then think work here as well. So Sorry, this can't work here. So I think we just have to use it for legend. So change it to average because we're working on average. So the next thing to do is to work on our colors. We'll come to the format menu. general move to the background select the colors that we're working with which is blue and then we move to visual border increase it and add the color that we've been working with i guess it's this so also increase the rounded corners to 15 Our time is fast spent, wasting a lot of time. Then shadow, add the shadow, which is this color. So we have this. Then I think we are good to go for this. Then try and work on the title. The title is in full format. The color is white. And after that, try and work on the X and Y axis. For the X axis, we have white color. Change it to white color. We can we can play around it. We can change the text format. Like we can increase it if we're not comfortable with this color. We can decide to make it bold or leave it like that. We can just try and play around it. Then this grid line, we are going to remove it. 
there's no title here. So we also work with the white houses as well. We still have a lot to cover. I'm looking at time. Make it bold. Then make the color white as well. Then we can decide to remove this as well. But let's just add it to it. Make it white. Just for so remove the title. So I think. Then the grid lines, we can remove it. Grid line is for maybe if someone is trying to make um, the data, maybe a particular visual, like the, visual, the visuals to be on, a, on the same line and not to make it scattered or just to make it on the same line, just to be on the same track and all. So for the columns, for the year, we are going to be working with these as well. The same thing we've been working with these. These. And this. I feel this this actually makes sense. So for the large, for the company with the large size, they discovered that 2022 they paid their their workers more salary, and for those that are small, we discovered that 2021 they pay them more compared to all other years. So this is what we can just derive from this as well. So, but we still have a lot to do, and our time is far spent. Okay. So, I think I'll just, I, I won't finish everything because I, I think we don't have more, enough time. So I'll just try and work on one more visuals and try and show us how we can export it to Power BI or better still. I'll just stop here. And I don't know, I'm, I'm trying to ask the, the host, which one is better? Should I just proceed or I should stop here and try and move on to the next place on how to publish on PowerPoint and how we can make use of our PowerPoints. Hello? Um, I think you should just make use of the PowerPoint so that's see the real use mm -hmm. case. Yeah. Okay. So now that we are done with this, visuals, I'm sure with this little understanding, with this little illustration that I've done, we can just, I feel we should be able to work more, like we can try out a lot of visuals on our own, maybe when we are away, and I'll try and share the data sets, we can try it on our own and see what we can do with it. So the next thing to do is to publish our data set first. Now my problem is, I don't know if, Sorry. I want to try and delete the first one I did initially. So, okay, let me just try it if it's going to work. You can publish both of them. Okay. So, Okay. Oh. Okay. Oh. 
Tourette. Sorry, please. Okay. So for we can publish our Power, Power BI on web. So to do that, I don't know if most of us can do that. You can just try and go to BI service. So, Why is it taking so much time? Please check your. In the URL you wrote. Why don't you just put Bobby? Yeah, I don't check call. your URL. It's www5. Is that what? Your URL, www5. Search of us. www5.bobby services. Okay. Your URL is incorrect. Okay, okay. Is an ocean. This was what I use. Where is of this? So, so um, it's on a, Yeah. Can you type powerbi.com? Just type powerbi.com. Yeah, it's opening now. Just type powerbi.com. Can you see my screen now? Yes. uploading it this was the one i did initially so normally i would have clicked on my workspace and try and look for it and upload it here then after i had uploaded it on my power bi service i tried to export it to my powerpoint and embed live data so i'll copy it Did I open it in PowerPoint or I open my PowerPoint and come to this place to click on add thing. Sorry, let me just delete this. So I'll come to Let me try and open a new file. I'm supposed to close it initially. So click on insert. Come here to add scene, get add scene. If you don't have it, get add scene. And if Power BI is in so installed already, you can just and then search for Power BI. Another aspect that I would like to explain is how to design your dashboard in case you. But that one is like a long process on its own, where you design your your page layout on PowerPoint, then move it straight to your to your Power BI. So here is how to integrate your Power BI into your PowerPoint. Maybe if you want presentation and all. So you had it. Okay. 
еще ничего. Okay, Power BI. You bring in your Power BI, then you paste your URL here, then you insert. So automatically, it's going to display your data set, your visuals that you've been working on on Power BI is going to display it for you here. So we have this so that's just all from me so that's all from me sorry this was the visuals that i designed earlier so that's why that one is still showing here but if it was the old one that the one that we worked on now it will if you copy it it will automatically display that here so that's all from me i don't know if anyone has anything or Hello, can you hear me? Thank you so much, Abisala, for the wonderful presentation. It was indeed enlightening. Thank you very much for all the tips and tricks on you. Thank you for choosing the right me. colors and all that for visualization. So um, you. if you have any questions, I'm speaking to the participants now. Please, if you have any questions, you can drop it in the comments or chat box. And then we'll see it and respond to it. Okay. While we wait okay. for your questions, I would like to ask you some questions, Abisola. So All right. How did you go about launching, or how did you start out in data analytics, start out your career in data analytics? <laughs> okay, thank you so much for that question. So my data analysis journey started back then in school when I was in 400 level. So I had a friend that came over to my room. So she was working on some set of data. Then she was using SPSS and I think Stata. So she was trying to work on some data set. So I, I met up with her. I was like, what is this all about? So I saw how she was making use of it. So after that, I decided to do my research and know, and know how it actually works. So I discovered that. So I, I just love the fact that I can get a large amount of data and make meaning from it. So during COVID, I saw a webinar online where they were talking about how to train people on data and people that are interested in data analysis that they should pay and chance to register. So because it was COVID time and so I just used that opportunity to just sign up for that webinar and I paid for the webinar and then after the webinar I was able to work more on my own and I love the fact that I can design some things on my own and make meaning from a large set of data. I just don't like the fact that you have a large amount of data and you can't read meaning to it. I, I just love the fact that, okay, after learning this, I can read meaning to this. I can, I'll be able to work on this data, clean it and make it very meaningful. And people that are going to see, they are going to be really interested based on the visuals, the insights on it. So, and I volunteered in some event that has to do with data analysis and all. So that was how I started my journey. And so now I'm, I'm, I have a role in data analysis. Thank you. That's interesting. Thank you for that. Yes. Your part of people who utilize your, um, what's it called, your pand the pandemic period for profitable use. Yes. So the other question I have is um okay let me let's just take a question in the chat so I ask ask my last question. So someone okay. asks, can Python be used for visualization? Also, okay, which yeah. one is better between Power BI and Python? I strongly need your advice. So he needs our advice on which is better, either okay. Power BI or Python. Okay, for me because I make use of Power BI, I I would say Power BI is 
better for me, but for someone that makes use of Python. You can also use Python for um, visualization, but most people, most people don't really use Python for visualization. Like Python is not a visualization, visualization tool. You can make use of Power BI, Tableau, and maybe Excel. So Python is not really used for, I can't say it is not used for visualization per se. So I feel Power BI is the best for me. Power BI is best for visualization. The aspect of it. then Python, you can use it to clean your data. You can use it for your codes and all. So that's just the answer to the question. He's still asking why most people won't use Python for. Is it because of deployment and scaling? And I think that's most likely the answer because Power BI help is very interactive. Yes. And you can share your reports with your stakeholders. But in the case of Python, most times, and they have limited visuals. Yes. Yeah, I must oh. say. So then you know, and also for Power BI, also sorry, I was supposed to add this. If in case you want to run your visuals and you need to, okay. You can also come here to get more visuals in case you are not satisfied with the visuals that you have. You can come here to get more visuals from Power BI and oh, so that's just what I want to add. There are thousands of visuals depend on your depending on your subscription and oh, but I'm sure when you come here to get more visuals, you'll be able to get more visuals that you want to use. Okay, thank you so much. So the next question I would like to ask quickly is. What advice would you give for people starting out in data analytics? Okay, my advice is going to be consistency and commitment. Uh, truly, it's actually not easy to be consistent with. Okay, Hi, Abisola. We can't hear you. It, it seems we've lost you for a bit. That. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yeah, I thought you said you can hear me. So what I was trying to say is commitment and consistency. So if it is five minutes that you can use daily just to start up your career in data analysis, you can start with that. Then from there, when you enjoy it, you increase it to 10 minutes, though I know it's not easy, but you can just start with some, you can just start from somewhere. And I can recommend um, 30 days of learning for you, like for people that are interested in starting their career in data analysis. So I'll probably share the link for the data sets and the link for the colors, like where you can get colors and also the link for the 30 days of learning after the call. Okay, thank, thank you, you so much. Oh, we appreciate that. I think that sums it all up for today. Thank you everyone for joining.